this was really my first, my first um, time really building, you know, this, this was my first in this area. <laughs> Sorry, I just got distracted. In this area, I didn't really know that many people. So I had to start to, you know, meet people. And how did I do that? Well, I joined a Bible study and I met a lot of people in that Bible study. And you guys, honestly, sometimes it's one place where you build a lot of this business. And it was in that little Bible study young church where I built a good part of my business. Sometimes that happens. But sometimes you also have to spread your wings, you know, wherever you are in life right now. If you've got small children, take them to the library, go to the park swim lessons, all art class, all of these things, mommy and me play groups. If you are a business person, you're probably going to the gym. Maybe you're going to church or a Bible study, or you have to maybe join a networking group to meet more people. There's all kinds of ways to build to up to where you find two by two by two by two. A lot of it's on social media too. We've got so many places you can go into groups and all this with similar um, likes that you have. So you got to find those people and you've got to learn to follow up too. And the follow-up really honestly almost paralyzed me. Um, I was super scared of that step. I could reach out and talk to people about Juice Plus, but when it came time to pick up the phone to ask them for the sale, <laughs> the fear of that was like almost brought me down. And I said, I've got to learn to work through this. And I did, you guys. I shook on the phone, I did it, and I realized that's where lives change. People's lives change because Julie chose to follow up. And by the way, my paycheck skyrocketed because I decided to follow up. So whatever your reason is there, you want to hike your paycheck up, follow up with people and follow up again and follow up again. My husband began to observe this in me. He's like, oh my goodness, you're patient. He's like, you're like a dog on a bone, Julie, not in a bad way, you guys but I was so diligent with that memory jogger. I would not let somebody go until they really, really wanted to go and I could tell. And I was very kind about it. Even when they said no, I would say, you know, this community is so awesome and I love the health information. Could I just keep you on your list to let you know about when we have a new cookbook that comes out or, or an event or, a doctor speaking locally. And I always got yes to that. I'm, maybe it was the way I said it, but I always kept my foot in the door with those people. So one of my favorite stories is Sharon and Stacy. I know they're both on here right now. Sharon and Stacy met at, at a table. There's another way to meet people. Set a table up somewhere. <laughs> Not a lemonade stand in your neighborhood, I'm talking because I think that's illegal, but you, you try to get a table someplace at the gym or at your, you know, a little fair at your church or whatever. Set a table up. That's where they met at a table. And a follow up call number one, Sharon reaches out to Stacy and she says, oh, I haven't looked at the information. So she follows up again. Call number two. I, I haven't looked. Call number three. She leaves a message for Stacy. Okay, a lot of people would stop there, wouldn't they? <laughs> They'd be like, I'm bothering this person. Don't let those thoughts come into your head because if I asked Stacy today to tell you whether she's glad Sharon made call number four, she would say, oh yes, I'm glad Sharon called me again. Call number four, Stacy's honest with Sharon now. She says, please don't call me again because my husband said no. She blames it on her husband, whether that's true or not, I'm just kidding. Okay. Call number five, Sharon calls again, Sharon. <laughs> and on the fifth call, Stacy says yes to Juice Plus in the business. You know why? Because on the fourth call, when Sharon heard that the husband said no, she sent a, a video to the husband and said, have him watch this. I mean, talk about a dog on a bone. You guys know Sharon is like that. That's what it takes to build this business. And maybe that's the only thing you needed to hear today. Maybe you're like, oh, that's what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> I'm giving up on call number two. Don't give up on call number two. Do three, four, and five, and six if you have to, and just be as nice as you can. Super nice, super concise. Just say, it's Julie calling you again. You know what? I just don't want you to miss this because I don't call you one more time. You guys, that's how I would talk to people. And they'd say, Julie, don't worry, you're not bothering me. And I'd say, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm bothering you, but we love Juice Plus so much. I don't want you to miss it because I don't call one more time. And they're like, okay, tell me one more time. <laughs> so 
just wear your heart on your sleeve and follow up. Okay. Um, just interrupt me, Karen, if we have questions. Okay, time blocking. Let's talk so about that. There is, before we start on a new subject, um, Jennifer had a question about if you could expand upon the three-way calls. Okay, three-way um, connections and why they're so important. So those are important because, you know, like here, like if you're, if you're gonna buy something, I have two sisters. If I'm with both of them and we're looking at something, if one of them says, Julie, buy that, I might buy it. But if the other one says, Julie, buy that, I definitely buy it. I don't know. There's something about having a third party come into the conversation and validate. That's what it's all about. And those three-way connections, whether it's a Zoom or a quick phone call, I used to hate those, you guys. I thought they were so corny and I thought that they were going to really irritate people, but they do not. There's, they are so powerful. So how do you do a three-way Zoom? you learn to invite people into the conversation. And this is how I had to do it for myself. So I felt right about it. I would say, oh my goodness, I would love for you to meet my friend, Amy. Amy was a business owner. She actually sold candles and worked all the time, even on holidays. And I love Amy's story about what happened with her and her family. Do you have a few minutes one day to meet Amy? I'd love for you to hear her story. That's what I would say. And I would also say, and Amy would love to meet you. I think that's important too. Don't just talk about your sponsor, but say, oh, my sponsor is going to love hearing what's happened to you and your family on Juice Plus. So do it both ways, your invitation. And then when you get on, you introduce everybody because no one knows any, each other. And then you be quiet and let the two talk. You know, if it's Sharon or it's Stacy or whoever your sponsor is, Gloria, they are the people that know how to do that communication there. And so that is a, just a very powerful thing. I've, I've done many, many three-way calls with people and I've seen a no turn into an ignited distributor, somebody who joins us as a partner and really takes off. So does that help? I hope that answered. Okay. Let's talk about time blocking. Um, my husband bought me a book called The One Thing one time, and I love this quote. Depending on your situation, your time block for working this business might look different than other people. Yours might be at a nursing home because you're taking care of a parent or in a parking lot because you're on your lunch break. Or you might be at home with small children, whatever your time block looks like, it might be nap time for them. Um, if you have to beg, beg. If you have to barter, barter. If you have to be creative, then be creative. Don't just be a victim of your circumstances. Don't sacrifice your time on the... So don't sacrifice your time block on the altar of, I just can't make it work. That's the quote from the book. And I took so much from that quote. I was like, wow, don't be a victim of your circumstances. Find a way to do it. And so my husband is a solution oriented thinker. I'm a complainer. <laughs> no, I've learned, I've learned over the years to be more solution oriented because he always goes for solutions. That's how, I think that's how a lot of men are, but that's how he is as a leader. Leaders don't look for problems or focus on them. Leaders find solutions to things so that my husband's an ultimate leader. So I would say my paycheck's growing because of the activity I'm doing. And by the way, when you have a time block, you've got to do the right things in that time block. And we'll get to that in a second. You can't do the 25 other things. You got to do the six that I talked about. Okay. And the first one is a must. So anyway, I would say, I see my paycheck growing, but I need more time. I need more time to build my, my business. And he said, okay, let's brainstorm this out. What can we do to give you more time? Let's call my dad. He said, my dad loves to be with Hannah. Let's see if he'll come over after nap time as often as he wants. And he can play with her so that you have nap time plus another 45 minutes or an hour. And that helped me so much, you guys, we started doing that. And my father-in-law was a win-win. He would feed Hannah lunch sometimes too, if, or a snack or whatever. And it, I have the best pictures. They had the best time together. And we didn't have him for very long because he was sick. So that was a precious time that he had with that baby. So I sought the help of him. Okay, so that's the first thing. Next thing, let's hire some babysitters. Now that we know it's working with my dad, let's look for some babysitters 
to help us and they can maybe do two hours after nap time, Julie, then you'd have maybe four hours of uninterrupted time. We did it. And you know, I was, I had the mom guilt at first. I was like, oh, wait, that's not good. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. They came and guess what happened? They were both excellent at art and I'm terrible at art. My kids are the best artists. You know why? Because of those two babysitters, Jen and Simone. They they played with Play-Doh. They did all these creative things that I didn't know how to do. It was, it was awesome. Okay. Housekeeper. Joel's like, stop cleaning the house, Julie. Okay. And I can go on and on. Multitasking. Learn how to multitask. Fold laundry. Make calls at the same time. You know, that kind of thing. And so I had to figure out how I could make my time blocks work. And in this book, the one thing, it's interesting because he says you should work on your side gig. You should be working about four hours a day. It doesn't have to be uninterrupted. It might be spread out. Now let's think about the 12 hours that we're awake every day. There are four hours someplace. It might be in 30 minute increments someplace. And maybe you guys, maybe honestly, you say, Julie, I can't do four hours right now. That's okay. You have to make the most of what you can do. And, you know, you might not move as fast as you want to in this business. That's okay. Just time block, figure out where that that's going to be. And, um, and then choose to do the right things in that time, which I think I hit on already because Stephen Covey talks about the important things. And those are the six that I taught you. And then there's urgent things. Oh, those urgent things take up so much of our time during the day. They're the little pop-up irritating messages that we get all day. Turn the notifications off if you have to. <laughs> if that all of a sudden you, pops up and you go, oh, and you waste an hour on the pop-up, then stop the pop-up, okay? But just make sure that you're focusing on what's important every day, okay? And you might have to defer some things too. You might have to say no a little bit. There might have to be a little bit of chaos for a little while. Everything might not be perfect while you're building this business. You guys, that's okay. Learn to let that go. That was really hard for me because I'm a perfectionist. I like my house to be perfectly organized. If you've ever been to my house, you know. But those years that I was building the business, I let it go. I let the housekeeping go to somebody else. I hated that. I'm the kind of person that gets a toothbrush and does the tile like, stop. I mean, who cares? What you can't take that with you. Who cares if the tile's dirty? Just <laughs> make money. Um, one of my favorite stories is Sue and Bob Burdick, and I won't take time, too much time to tell their story, but she said, You can make beds or you can make money. And she has such an awesome story about how they, they lost their income and they had to sell their family farm that in Georgia that they loved. And they built this business and they went back and bought their farm. Isn't that so cool? And today they have the original door from the farm house, the old one, there with their brand new beautiful farmhouse and their RV, I mean, not RVs, um, ATD little, I think ATD. <laughs> anyway, their grandchildren come, they've got slides and all this stuff. Anyway, it's a beautiful story, but I love that. You can make beds or you can make money. And I chose to make the money. I could have cleaned the closets out and done all that, you know, but I just let that go for a season. Okay, today, if you walk in, my closets are all clean because I'm back to that. But all right, um, so let's talk about balance. Some of you are like, I know, Julie, but I don't really like to be out of balance. <laughs> there is no such thing as balance, really. Maybe sometimes we have balance. Like yesterday, we probably had balance because we were enjoying our holiday and our family and food and all that stuff. Balance. So let's talk about balance. There's a scale, a little teeter-totter, and the middle is balance, okay? And sometimes we're there for a few minutes <laughs> during the day doing yoga or ac acupuncture. I'm, I'm laughing. I'm kidding. But anyway, balance. But we're going to go away from the center of that scale. Every once in a while, we're going to get out of balance. And so that's what getting, that's why counterbalancing is, is important. Counterbalancing is, oh, I'm away from the middle, but I'm going to find my way back to the middle and have a little bit of balance again. And then I'm going to go away from the middle. So that is what our lives are all about. We're in the middle balance sometimes, but then we go away and we have to counterbalance and come back. You never want to get so far away from the center that you can't find your way back because you stay away from the center 
for too long. And I don't want to cry today, but I can tell you that I did that in my life for about five years. And I learned a very hard lesson. Don't do that. If something comes into your life, which is what happened to us, my daughter became America's top young scientist. It's a beautiful story, you guys, and it has a lot to do with this business. I don't know if she would have been able to achieve that, honestly. Not, not the ability, she could have achieved it, but there were steps that this business made possible for us to reach that moment in her life. And when that happened, it was like so much activity entered our lives. We started traveling all over the world with her. And guess what happened to Julie's counterbalance? <laughs> I went, it went way off. I was over here, but you know what? Instead of saying no to some things, I forgot that. I forgot to defer some things and say no to some things. I felt like I could do it all and be the invincible mom and the wife and the business owner and all this stuff. And it does, you can't stay out there for too long or you're gonna get whacked, okay? And so it's just like a father who is committed to his family. He's working so much at his job to support his family, but he's gone all the time and he misses he misses what happens with his kids. You know, that is another example, okay? And it can happen to a mom too. So anyway, balance. Sometimes though, let me give you permission because sometimes it's okay to go away from the middle in an all out massive action mode. That's okay. And you know what? In the book, The One Thing, he says that's where magic happens over there where we're out of balance and we're working, we're pushing toward a goal there's, there's good in that. And you're going to have seasons of that. I hope you're having a season like that in our business right now, because we have an opportunity to go out of balance a little bit with our business, <laughs> go all out massive action and go to the end of the teeter totter, not forever, but for June, July, and August. I mean, we wrote June's over July and August, go to the end of the thing, because we have a chance to share our business with everybody and invite them in. It's awesome. So it's a good time to have a season of all out massive action, but you're not gonna stay there forever. Okay, that's the key. Magic happens at that extreme though. So give yourself permission to go over there. And by the way, when you go over there, get the support of your environment on board. You don't lose your marriage because you're over there. <laughs> your child doesn't go off and you know, no, that's not, that's not what we're talking about. And I want to share a story because I love this. Nicole Fink, she is an NMD. You can look her up on Facebook. Now her name is Nicole Fink Clays. Um, her husband, after 10 years of marriage, they had four kids, I think maybe five, um, said, I want a divorce. Saddest story. And here she was staring these little children in the face. And she sat down with them and she said, I can go back to work um, or you guys can help me and I can build the juice plus business. It's such a beautiful story. I could start crying over it. Anyway, she said, mommy. And they said, mommy, we want you to build the juice plus business. We're going to help you. So there were older and there were younger children. And she basically went into a room and she said, if there's a sign on the door, unless you're bleeding or you need, um, or the house is on fire, you can't come in the room because <laughs> I'm building the business. And they didn't. They helped each other. And you guys, she fast-tracked to the highest level in our company. Isn't that a beautiful story? That is what it means to work at the extremes. And now she's remarried. It's a, it's just a, I love that story. And we have a lot of stories like that, even on our own team. It's the kind of stuff that this business is made of. It's what makes this business. So magic happens at the extremes, okay? And, and don't forget, you guys, about self-care and family time. So when I'm talking about the six things, that's in your time block. There's four hours you're going to try, and that's your goal. Four hours a day at least. Some of you are working six or seven hours a day. You're really taking this seriously because this is your job, and you can have that time. But I hope you have time for self-care and family time in there too. Those are so important, and they should be part of your life, okay? And what does it look like to do self-care and have family time? It means simplifying life the best you can. And that's, a, that's for another day, but that's what I'm learning to do. Simple meals, simplicity, letting go, don't be so perfect, you know, whatever. And we could go on and on, but we won't talk about that. Okay, spouses, <laughs> let's talk about spouses. You say, Julie, 
my little environment is not on board. <laughs> I have strong goals, but my environment's not on board. Okay, I know that happens sometimes. You're going to have to be patient until they get on board. And sometimes they might never get on board. And you know what that means, guys? It just means you have to go a little bit slower because you can't drop all your important priorities. You have to keep those priorities in place. And it's one of the saddest things I've seen in this business is where a skeptical support team discourages the person trying to work this business. And I just want to give you the hope that you can do it under that pressure. You can still do it. You can still make it happen. My husband was supportive yet very skeptical. And, you know, I had to just be quiet, build this business and build my paycheck. I knew that paycheck was going to speak to him. I knew it would. So I had to do my very best to keep life as normal as possible and pray that he would come on board at some point. And he did. And we have a, a fun training called From Dishes to DMO. <laughs> it started out like he would come home as I was beginning. One, one day he came home actually, and I had made my ultimate goal. It was, well, it was actually $400 a month. It was, it was what my car payment was because that's what he, he gave me that as a goal, make your car payment. And I had my car payment check on the counter for him to see. And I was so proud. I made a nice dinner and I couldn't wait for him to see the check. And I remember him coming in and he looked on, he looked on the counter and he said, oh, and I said, do you, I made my car payment. And he goes, oh, that's good. He goes, okay, see if you can make the house payment. And he went upstairs to change. <laughs> I was so upset. I was hurt. I was angry. I wanted to scream at him. And I thought, I'm going to show him. <laughs> I am going to show him. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to make his car payment now. So if you have to get a little mad and competitive, do it, but don't say it out loud. You don't have to say it out loud. And so I just calmed myself down, put on my big girl pants and went back to work. And all of a sudden I was making the house payment and it became fun. I was like, I'm paying for the groceries. I'm paying for cable. I'm paying for your car. I'm paying the insurance on the house. I'm paying for this. All of a sudden, boom, it turned into, oh my goodness, Julie, this is working. This is our business. <laughs> and my husband started saying, oh, let me clean up the house. I'm going to do the dishes and everything tonight. You go work on Juice Plus. And I was like, okay. Again, I kept my mouth closed. I didn't go, well, it's about time, buddy. No, I didn't do anything like that. I just said, okay, thank you so much, honey. And I went over and worked. And little by little, Joel got on board. And finally, I reached national marketing director. And he came to the conference and saw our company. And then when we came home, he wanted to join me now as a partner. And he started doing DMO himself. And I could tell you the neatest stories about him sharing Juice Plus with people, which he still does today. And that is how we got, you know, he, he, we built him up to becoming a national marketing director as well. So, okay. DMO for moms. Okay. I, I could do a whole training on this, but let me give you this quote. When you're supposed to be working work, when you're supposed to be playing play, it's a back and forth as moms, it's working in stolen moments and you have to reward your children and you have to customize what your schedule is going to look like. You're a mom, you're in charge. They're not in charge. The kids are not in charge. You are. You're in charge of life because you're going to build this business and change their lives alongside of you in two ways. Number one, you're going to give them opportunities that they might never have because you're going to have the money to make dreams come true. Okay. And that's a beautiful thing. And you might not see it yet, but I can see it for you because that's what happened to me. The second thing that's going to happen is your children are going to watch you build something for your family and it's going to inspire them the same way. They're going to become goal setters and accomplishers and compassionate. They're going to care about people. There's so much that they're going to learn from watching you and you're going to celebrate. One of our greatest celebrations was when we bought our dream house in our dream neighborhood, which eventually happened because Julie's paycheck kept growing and growing. And all of a sudden I'm like, we can buy a house in 
Boca Bath and Tennis. This was the neighborhood that everybody wanted to live in. And I'm like, let's go buy a house there. So the first thing we did when we got into the house, we didn't set the kitchen up. You know what we set up? The playroom. And I did that because I wanted to reward my children because we built this massive business. I was a CEO in my pajamas with these two little children going back and forth, work, play, work, play. Mommy makes calls and we have a tea party. Mommy makes calls. Now we play trucks and play to <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. And that playroom was a symbol. I can see that playroom on my mind. It had everything in it, you guys. Ant farm, swing, trampoline, every toy you could imagine. And it looked like a giant, I don't know, classroom, playroom. And that was a celebration because we had done that together. And so as a mom, I just want to encourage you. It's going to be hard sometimes because you're going to have to do the back and forth and work during nap time and, and do simplified dinners and learn how to clean the house up in 10 minutes. You can do it though. And you have to learn to say no for a season sometimes and defer things. Eventually I became the room mom and I did all that. But at first I said no during the season where I was working my business, I said no to a lot of things because I wanted to say yes to the business. But then I got to say yes to all the other stuff because of the business. So it's just such an awesome thing. Okay, I'm almost done, but just interrupt me, Karen. <laughs> yeah, there's, I mean, you're doing so well. Nobody has any questions. It just is accolades after accolades. Oh, and I wish I could read the chat. I know. because I, I, I have to tell you that I remember going to that house and I looked at just the playroom and was like, Holy cow. I mean, it, that house always blew me away. And that's when I, I think your house gave me more vision. Oh, well, I love that. I love that. And I know that um, when we sold that house, we actually sold it to move to the beach and have the beach life. Um, we sold our house completely furnished. And the lady who bought the house had two children. She's like, Will you leave everything in the playroom exactly like it is? She even wanted the my, the pictures my kids had made. <laughs> I said, no, I have to take their art with me. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Anyway, okay. At the Energy Bus. This is another book that I love. It's called The Energy Bus. And if there's any book that you can read, it is such a good read. It is so much about our business. You are the chief energy operator, the CEO, the chief energy operator of your company. And you have to be, have lots of positive energy. So you're the driver of your bus and you're going to open your bus door and who's going to get on your bus, your team. You are going to invite people to join your team who are just like you. They're positive. They're happy. They have the success ingredients. What are the success ingredients? They have some kind of why it could even be to build their or to pay for their product. That's okay. That's where a lot of people start. Um, you want to have some people on your bus, though, who have a strong why, a strong desire to succeed. Okay. So everybody's going to get there, though. They have a why. They're teachable. They're willing to work. They're willing to work at this. And they care more about other people than they do themselves. Those are the people you're looking for to get on your bus with you. Okay. You are not looking for energy vampires. That's what the bus, <laughs> that's what the book calls people on the bus who are trying to steal the energy from people. Okay, we have to run away from people like that. So you don't have to invite everybody into your business. There are some toxic people that you don't want in your business. Sometimes those people come into our business and we can't help it, but we have to learn how to encourage them to be positive. The other thing that you really want on this energy bus is you want people to become independent of you. You want to teach them the six things. You want to teach them to communicate on Voxer. If they don't ever download Voxer, you know, that's how we communicate with each other. And so you be patient. You love them. I'm a big believer in meeting people where they are because not everybody's going to move at the same pace. There are some extremely successful people in this business, like Shelly Mackey. Probably you guys have heard of Shelly Mackey. Do you know Shelly Mackey sat on the bus for like seven years, I think, before she became a high energy business owner. <laughs> it took her that long to sit on the bus. She was still welcome on the bus, don't get me wrong, but she didn't take off right away. That's okay. So, but ultimately you want people, they're welcome onto the bus, but they can't drain energy from you unless they want to be empowered 
to build their own business and become successful. That is a huge part of our business. You can't do the work for everybody because you guys, you'll never move forward. So you're going to hold their hand. You're going to spoon feed a lot at the beginning. You're going to invite them to event after event after event. It's just like follow-up. It's tiring. But eventually they're going to get in the room one night and they're going to hear the mindset shift they need to have. And all of a sudden they get it. It's like a light bulb that goes off. But you have to make create that the environment for that kind of stuff to happen. And Sharon and Doug are fantastic examples of this. That's why we're on here today. Some of you, your light bulb might go off today and you're like, I got it. I heard what I needed to hear today to turn my business around. It's just like, that is what happens. But you have to have that you have to invite. So you invite people like a Shelly Mackey who's sitting on your bus. You invite her to every event, every conference, every this, every that. You have to be patient until Shelly decides for herself that she's ready to take off. But you can't spend too much time on Shelly, okay? Because you're going to waste valuable time from building frontline. I talk to the leaders on our team a lot. We do a Zoom once a month. And as soon as you reach sales coordinator and you're starting to establish your business, you get to be on that call every month. And our word for the year is fish. And it's fish for two reasons. First of all, you have to fish over and over for new people. You can't ever stop that. Leaders never tire of the basics of this business. You do not tire of the basics. Don't ever go into management mode, okay? So you're fishing for other people all the time and you're empowering them to to go out and fish for themselves. You you know, you can feed people fish, but you can teach them to go fish and now you've created a leader. Okay, so you don't want to feed the people the fish. You want to teach them to fish for themselves and that's exactly what our business is about. Okay. Um I think I have one more quick thing and then a fast story. Okay. Four thieves of productivity, okay? The you can't say no. You've got to learn to say no. <laughs> If you're a person that can't say no, you're never truly going to be able to say yes. Okay, so you've got to learn to say no to some things to build your business. And I know I've talked about that a little bit too. You still get to say yes down the road a lot. Okay, accept chaos. It's okay to have some chaos. I, I know that sometimes you're like, yes, but I don't know what to do first. I don't just pick the phone up. <laughs> start calling, just start calling people if you don't know what else to do. That's what's going to build this business. Okay. So accept chaos. It doesn't all have to look perfect. When you create a plan to get your, your stuff done every day, that's important. I'm not talking about that. Like on Sunday nights, if you can take a few minutes to think about your week, map it out, it's going to be much better than just shooting from the hip. You'll be much more organized. Okay. I'm talking about accepting chaos. Like Okay, everything's not cleaned up right now, so I don't think I can start to work. Work while you're cleaning up. I mean, accept chaos, it's okay. All right, third thing is manage your energy. And that has a lot to do with, you know, there's a time to, you know, discipline your disappointments and, um, you know, get your negative mindset back on a positive track and things like that too. Because I'll tell you when I had a customer cancel at first, it was just like somebody kicked me in the gut. <laughs> I became so upset about that. And it was like, oh no, you know, that was so hard to get them. And now they stopped. And I, you know, we just have to discipline our disappointments, get back up, dust your knees off and keep going. Okay. Manage your energy. And then the last thing is take ownership of your environment. And you know, your environment is really important. You've got to have a, a supportive, positive environment around you. And I know that's not always possible because sometimes you've got family and you can't, you know, they're your family. You just have to kind of block that out, the negativity, and just focus on what's positive. And okay. And um, I don't even know if we have time for my story. Here, here's a last quote, because maybe we can take some questions. Um, I heard this quote when I first started really taking off with this business for three, if you are willing for three to five years to do what most people won't, you'll spend the rest of your life doing what most people can't. And when I heard that at a training one time, I thought, that's me. I want to do this in three to five years. I'm going to do it. I can do it. It's going to mean changing some things in my life to get it done. And that's what my last story was about. 
but I'm going to do it. And my last story was just about, I bought my kids a puppy last year. They were, they were 17 and 20. I finally bought them a puppy. <laughs> I said, okay, train them. <laughs> and I gave them a year. I accepted chaos during the year because I was trying to teach my kids a lesson. I'm like, okay, take care of the dog. Up. Oh, no, nope, you got to take care of the dog. Yeah, take care of the dog. <laughs> I woke him up uh, all this. After a year, they didn't take care of the dog. It was time for Julie to step in. Okay, and that's okay. That's what we do as parents sometimes. But as I was training that dog, I remembered my business. I was like, I got to get up early. I got to walk. <laughs> I got to take a shower because it's hot now. I, I've got to, you know, train him. I have to be consistent. I, I have to you know, customize my plan and figure out what it, oh, it just reminded me so much of my business, but you know what? Success. That little dog, I say, come, he comes. <laughs> sit, sit, paw, paw. I mean, it's like, and you can do it. It, it is just, you got to get your mindset right. You got to figure out why you want it so much. And I didn't want him going to the bathroom in the house anymore. That was my, <laughs> and I wanted him sleeping by himself and not crying. Anyway, it's possible you can do it. Okay. Let me stop and look at your wonderful faces and see what I can answer for you guys. I know a lot of this was probably repetition for you all, but I hope, oh, I hope that there were things that you grabbed onto. Karen. There was one, um, one person wanted to know what are your top three books? And I know that's really hard because I think it depends in my opinion on where you kind of are in the beginning, but. Yes, okay. Where you are, but. So I would say specifically for new people, what are your top three books for new people? Okay. And just in case you guys don't know this, I just want to tell you this on campbellteam.net and the password is Campbell team. If you've never been there before, go there. Campbellteam.net password is all one word Campbell team, lowercase under resources. There is a book review section. And there are the favorite books of NMDs there. Isn't that cool? So, in, and there's a bunch of messages on books. If you don't want to read, this is the perfect thing. I'd like, there's a bunch of messages on the secrets of six figure women, which is an excellent book. And you don't have to read it. You can listen to the messages at first until you get time to read it. You know, my husband gets books all the time. He's got a giant stack and I'm like, doesn't that stress you out that you have so many books that you haven't read yet? He goes, no, because I'm going to read them in retirement. <laughs> I go, oh, I can learn so much from him. I have a stack of books and it stresses me out. I feel like I have to read them all right now. Stop, Julie. You don't have to read them all now. You read them as you go. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me answer your question. So The Business of the 21st Century by Robert Kiyosaki is one of my favorite books because I had such a hard time embracing this business, you guys. I had friends who did Tupperware and Mary Kay and creative memories. And I loved supporting them, but I never saw myself doing that. This business is not that. It's so different. It's so much more simple. It's wonderful. We have the best home-based business in the world. We honestly do. We have the best compensation plan. We, our compensation plan doesn't hold a candle to anyone else's. Don't ever let anybody tell you that they have a better home business than this one, no way. But I had to open my eyes to network marketing. Okay, so that's my first. My second was, um, well, The Energy Bus. I would have to say that The Energy Bus became one of my favorite books because you guys will just love it. You'll love it. Um, the One Minute Manager Meets the Monkey. If you're a leader in this business and you're having a hard time empowering other people, you need to read that book. Um, because there was a point in my business, I was at a leadership level where I hit a brick wall, literally hit it. I had a 12 club business at the time, but I was completely drained, <laughs> overwhelmed. And my husband got me the book. He gets me all my best books. And I finally read the book and it, I was the worst case scenario in the book. I was the um, monkey grabber the ultimate monkey grabber. And I actually grabbed things to do from other people instead of empowering them to do them. And I really needed to read that book at that time because I was a professional monkey grabber and I needed to learn to stop grabbing monkeys from other people and help them take care of their own monkeys. Anyway, a monkey is the next move on something. Okay, so that was a, a book. And then um, I would say, let's see, um, Oh, I had another book just go out of my head that I love so much. Oh, okay. 
let me think, what was my last one? Um, well, anything by Jim Rohn is good, but um, okay, I'm sorry, I lost my last one. The business of the 21st century, the energy bus, one minute manager meets the monkey. I think that's a good one if you're at that level where maybe you have a team that's really growing and you need, you've hit that brick wall of, oh my gosh, I have to learn how to empower them. So there's no other questions. I would love to hear how you invite into our business. I think everybody can gain from that. Okay. So when somebody asks me what I do, and that happens a lot, you know, I always go back and tell my story. Okay. That's just my answer. I've tried other things like, oh, I teach nutrition. I work for a company who found a way to put fruits and vegetables in capsules. But my favorite is, well, 22 years ago, my sister told me about something. I start with my story and I tell them a quick version of my story. And I usually have them so curious. So you've got to have different versions of your story. You've got to have a really short, powerful one that you would tell in like 30 seconds. And then you want to have a little bit longer one that you tell if you have a few more minutes. And then you want to have one that you tell on a three-way Zoom when you become a leader in this business. Okay, so you're going to have different versions of your story. Why is my version longer on a three-way Zoom? Because I want people to hear that I was scared of selling. I want them to hear that. That resonates with so many people. There's certain parts, but I'm not going to tell somebody that in 30 seconds. <laughs> no, that's not my goal. So that's, that's how I invite people into the business is I'll tell them my story. And then I will ask them if they'd love to learn more about Juice Plus. And I have learned, and I think I did this very early on, but didn't realize it. I pretty much invited everybody into the business at the beginning. And Sharon reminded me of that one day. She's like, Julie, you invited everybody to the business because she and I would do events together. And after the event, we would hang out and we would talk about the business. It was a product event, but we would talk about the business after while we were having hummus, which nobody knew what hummus was at the time. <laughs> That's how long ago it was. We would say, we're going to make something called hummus. And they're like, what is it called? <laughs> That's so funny. I'm like, yes, we're going to send home the recipe with you. So today it's going to be something like a salad in a jar or who knows, kombucha. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so that's, I just kind of mesh the two together because you know what, both of them have so much to do with the other one and find things that work for you. Like, you know what, um, I, some people talk about, you know, I, I know you've got choices here, you know, you can be my customer or you can share it with a handful of people and, you know, pay for your product maybe. I think that's good to get some little things down like that in your mind. Um, and I think what I do a lot is I say, you know, I naturally started sharing Juice Plus and you probably will too. I mean, if you have a few minutes, I would love to tell you how you could get started sharing and, you know, pay for your product or maybe make 500 a month. And a lot of people will say yes to that. Good. Anybody else? <clears throat> I don't see any other questions in the chat. Does anybody else have any other questions? It's one o'clock now. I know the chat was full of, thank you so much, Julie. I mean, oh my gosh, it's, oh, I don't care how many times I listen to you speak. It's always such good information. I know that was a lot I threw at you, but hopefully, you know, it will stick. And I am going to do a training coming up for moms because I know that's a challenging one. You know, there are a lot of moms that want to build this business and bless their family. And um, wow, if we sat here long enough and I told you how grateful I am for this today. And, you know, I want to say thank you back to all of you because I wouldn't be where I am in life today without this team, you know, that came around me. And I know Doug and Sharon are getting ready to realize an amazing dream this week and just being able to up and go, isn't it fun to watch their life and how they are doing it alongside this business in such a fun and beautiful way. I mean, God is so good. So awesome. I know I did put, so we're going to go, I'll stop streaming live on Facebook in a minute. What I, I posted in the chat 
I mean, this was just so valuable, this training. I'm only so sorry that I recorded about, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes and I missed the beginning of it, but it's in Facebook. So tag your team that couldn't make it today because, you know, this is something that while Julie is beautiful, you know, to look at, they can even do fold laundry while listening to this on the side. They don't have, because a lot of people don't sometimes have, think, oh my gosh, I don't have an hour to sit down and watch this. They don't have to watch it. They can just listen to it. Great. All right. No other questions. Let me stop. You guys have three more hours. <laughs> You've already spent one hour. Too. <laughs> this hour doesn't count though. No, just kidding. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Julie. It's always so good to hear from you. And thank you for everybody that showed up on a holiday, you know, Monday. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Okay. Thanks, you guys. Have a good rest.